Now, you mentioned there are, there are several factors that, that has to be looked into in Chicago to try and work out how much to charge for a, a particular commodity. So what are these factors? Um, as in supply and demand, I'm trying not to use the jargon around here. Yep. Supply and so demand. Supply, demand. One of the supply being producers, demand being consumers or customers. Yes. And right. then these are, are very important drivers of prices because then if we have problems with the supplies, then prices are going to go up. And if demand is not coming, for instance, when we had this, uh, let's say, if COVID could last longer for, co let's, let's think about coffee, for instance. It's very related to, you know, the final demand where you're going to be able to go to the coffee shop and purchase your, you know, your cup of coffee. And then if this demand is not coming, then they're not buying. So then prices are going to go down because they don't have demand. So these are factors that we look into. Uh, weather is important as well because then it de depending on the weather, we know how much production we're going to have or not. So weather is also important. Um, I would say that when we are talking about, you know, funds or these kind of things that use like more risky money, let's put it this way, uh, they are just trying to get the best return from their investments. And if we have a, a rise in interest rates in, a, for instance, like the United States, which is a safer place to invest, then they're going to dr drive their investments from the, the commodities, which is riskier. To United States to get a better return. So this is also something that impacts because then you have the demand on the, the exchange, um, the future exchange. So factor, um, I would say basically those, are, I think there's more, but um, let's stream it down. Otherwise I'm going to be talking here like forever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, forever is good. Forever is good. I mean, you know, the, the more you tell us, the more we'll learn. So, so that's a key part. Right now, you know, there's a conflict going on. Well, there's conflicts going on everywhere in the world, yeah. but the major one right now seems to be Ukraine and Russia. Do conflicts in general affect commodity prices as well? Yes, it does. It does. It depends on where it's taking place. Uh, if, for instance, I think um, I'm not very familiar with Europe uh, production or the type of products they actually uh, produce there, uh, grow there, but uh, I would say wheat, for instance, I think Ukraine is good in wheat and corn. I think they are good producers of those. And of course it's gonna affect the, they're not the main producers, but they are an important part. And with, if you think about energy as well, uh, there is you no know, this gas, this pipe that go around this country. So it has an impact in the final, in the, final, um, in the, in the oil demand globally. So of course there is an impact there. And if we think that ethanol is one of the uh, substitutes for, uh, for, I don't know, oil or gasoline or things like that, then we have an increase in corn because corn is also one of the raw materials to produce ethanol in the United States. So it's kind of all intertwined. And for instance, if we think about cotton, we use synthetic materials to, to produce cloth. And then they are competing with uh, cotton. And then, of course, if we have an, uh, an, is an issue with this, you know, uh, supply of oil, then, of course, it's going to impact the cotton prices as well. And it's all, all intertwined in the end. Interesting. It's really interesting, interesting yeah. Yeah, really interesting. It, it goes deep, right? It goes really deep because yeah. there's so many different factors that can affect the overall price. So is price decided on, on a weekly basis, monthly basis, daily basis, hourly basis, by second? Like, how, how is this done? Like, what's, what's the time frame we're looking at? I'd say every, every moment, every minute, there's like trades going on around the globe. So every time someone wants to buy or, or sell in the future exchange, we're going to have some changes there. They're going to define prices. And whenever there is a, a, a final buyer at the destination purchasing from a supplier, you're going to have prices setting. So it's like all the time because it's globally traded. So there is not a minute of, you know, <laughs> because when we are here sleeping in Brazil, they're trading in China. So, <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. so it can't be like, I Never checked my any. email, I like the price, I'm going to book it in, but I'm tired. So I wake up tomorrow, I, I, I won't get the same price. It's going to change. Probably not. Probably oh, not. Wow. Probably That's, not. Uh, that sounds really stressful. Very dynamic. Yes, it is. For the traders, definitely. definitely. Right. <laughs> they're taking positions, right? So they are you no know, prone to those fluctuations in the market and how it's going to affect their final results.